Thank you very much. Um, John, Mrs. Zhang, ladies and gentlemen, I represent a small group from Britain who played a part, a small part, but I hope an important part, in John's early life. And you saw reference to it in this amazing video. But there's uh, Robert Sawyer and Martin Boyle and myself all had a little part to play, and I can't tell you how proud we all are today to be associated with what's happened since this cheeky young chappy <laughs> came to my laboratory in Cambridge, having been two years previously in Birmingham, and convinced me, I don't know how in hindsight, but it was obviously very convincing, that he should do a PhD degree. He came and applied for a technician's job, and there was something about John at the interview that both Martin and I realized we had to employ him even though within two weeks it became clearly apparent that he was no technician, he was much more than that. So he applied for and quickly got registration for and carried out a very good degree, a PhD degree, but working with horses. And do you all realize before he started this work on humans, he was very good. He wasn't to begin with, but he learned how to collect semen from stallions. <laughs> Having never handled a horse, I don't think, in his life before, he was very brave, because it's quite awe-inspiring when you stand beneath a horse who mounts the mare to get the thing we call the artificial vagina in place to collect the semen. It's quite awe-inspiring, and John had trouble to begin with, but he listened to what we said, and he did a very good job. And he also made mention of the other thing that he became quite good at, was making hay. We had to make the food for our horses, and so every summer, for about three weeks, they were all dragged from the laboratory and put out into the paddocks, into the fields, and onto the tractors to make the hay. And John was not very good initially at throwing the hay bales, but he got better. But what I would never let him do was drive the tractor. <laughs> don't let John drive your tractor. He, I don't know what he's like in a car now, but he was never very good at a tractor in those days. <laughs> And as time went on, he, he completed a very good degree, as I say, and he always had this desire, clearly, to get to this country and get back into human medicine, human infertility, and to start the sort of clinic which he has created. And for us, who haven't really seen much of him over the last 20 years, to see the transformation from this cheeky, chappy student. And I should also tell you, when he was in Cambridge, he very quickly became the leader. I don't know how... Of the, of the Chinese community in Cambridge, which wasn't very big at that time. It is now, it's very big, but in those days it was small. But within about two months, Yang Zhang here was leading the Chinese community. He was head of the mafia, he was always, it, 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 it was always reputed to say. And then finally, I think one of the important things is we, were, we moved our premises from Cambridge to Newmarket, which is only 12 miles away, which is the center of horse breeding in England. It's like the Lexington of Kentucky here in America. And we were lucky that Her Majesty the Queen came and opened the unit. And I have a little thing here which I would like to present to John. And I hope you'll all have a look at it later. It's a, a collage that was made up at the time of Her Majesty opening the place. And on the top here, you will see a beaming young John <laughs> having just spoken to the Queen and shown her some embryos under the microscope. And above that again is what his real job was, was making hay in the fields. <laughs> and hay making and John talking to the Queen. And I have to tell you, when she went by and I was leading her around, she, as we went away, said, that's an intriguing young man. Is he very bright? And I was happy to say, yes, he is. And I think that has been substantiated and proven admirably today. He is indeed a bright man, a clever man, a hard-working man, and above all, a very kind man. John, thank you very much for bringing us across to be part of this wonderful occasion. And you should know that your old bosses of many years ago are indeed proud of you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Keith.